Hello, just good your works here, back from the review, and I'm finally going to get around to reviewing the set that a lot of you guys have been requesting it is the much anticipated and biggest Lego Marvel superhero set ever. Set number 76021. It's called the Milano Spaceship Rescue. It has five minifigures, 665 pieces, and it retails for $75 in the United States. And you could probably find it at most stores by now in the United States and most likely around the world. So now let's take a look at the packaging. So here is the box for the set. It is a $60 box size, I believe. So it's not the traditional $70 box size we're used to seeing. It is a $75 set, so I can't blame them. And it is really cool. I like the background detail with the Galaxy printing. And yeah, it really displays the set really well. Best part about this box, this side has the comic art. And that's not found on any of the other Guardians of the Galaxy sets. So I'm so glad they included this. It's such a little stupid detail. But I love when they include these side realistic comic arts on the Marvel sets. And it's a shame that it's not found on any of the other boxes. And the back displays the set quite well. And the set does include two pretty big instruction booklets, which is what you'd expect from a set this size. And this little comic book, which is nothing special, nothing different from the other ones. And the best part about it is that it does have this pretty cool spread on the back of the LEGO Marvel Super Heroes Guardians of the Galaxy sets, which you can't really find it on any of the other sets this size. So it is really cool once you see it in a little bit of a bigger printing. Okay, so here is Peter Quill, or Star-Lord. Of course, I guess the main star of the movie. And he does come with this little build right here, which I guess is something he uses to travel outside the spaceship because that's kind of how it shows how it's being used on the box. So that's kind of interesting. And he does come with his two guns that are found in basically all the other sets. Really cool gun molds that are exclusive to this LEGO Guardians of the Galaxy line. So those are always cool. And this version, while it looks a lot like the one in the smallest set, is different. And I kind of made that mistake in the review of the smallest set where I said both of them are the same. And basically you can see their torsos are a little bit different. Uh, this one has more of a jacket, the one from the smaller set. While this one has more of his, I guess, Guardians of the Galaxy attire. And you can see they're different on the back of their minifigure torsos. And both do have the same face print. So you can see that right there. And both do give you this little hair piece in the set, which is basically the Mutt Williams or Agent Chase comb hair, which is a really cool hair piece in that kind of caramel color. So that's pretty cool to get. And both do give you his really awesome helmet piece, which is an exclusive mold for the Guardians of the Galaxy line alone. That's really well done, too. So that's it for the minifigure, and now on to the next. Here is Gamora, and she's a really awesome minifigure. I love her light green skin, and also her face print has some really cool silver detail on it. You can see it's a little bit shiny right there. And that's a really nice touch. And she is exclusive to the set as a character, which is really cool that they have this exclusive minifigure. And she is a member of the Guardians of the Galaxy. And here's her back printing. And just taking a look at her hairpiece, while it isn't a new mold, it does have some very, very nice printing with the purple little strands of hair right there and there. So that's really cool. And it's just really black. So that's nice. She does come with this little katana right here in this silver color which is nothing exclusive or rare or anything like that. And then, yeah, that's really it for Gamora. And here's Drax the Destroyer. Wow, this dude has some very, very, very awesome printing all over him. You can just see just a taste of his torso printing. It's very detailed. It has these little tiny, tiny details. Like you can see they're using skull Lego minifigure heads instead of regular skull heads. And he does have the same leg print as uh, Star-Lord and Gamora in this set. But that's alright because the rest of the minifigure is so, so detailed. He has some nice detail on the side of his arms. And you can just see just the little squiggles and stuff that are so detailed. And same goes with this arm right here, which is different from the opposite arm. Because this one has some skulls instead of some explosions, it looks like. And on the back, it has some more skulls all over. Some really intricate lines. And the same goes for the back of his head so wow what a well done minifigure he also comes with these little two daggers which aren't exclusive molds or anything like that but still this minifigure is so awesome and here's ronin the accuser he is really cool because he comes with this big hammer right here which isn't i guess the best part about him 
But looking at his torso, all that is some very nice printing, but the best part is that he comes with this exclusive kind of helmet mold, which also doubles as some shoulder pads. Wow, it's nice that they included an exclusive mold just for a minifigure that is only in the biggest set of the line. That's really well done. It's a hard plastic, so it won't break or anything like that. And it looks a little bit like it is rubber, but it is not rubber. I guarantee it. So that's really, really, really cool. And going on his face print, you see he has kind of this stern face on the front right there. Then he has this kind of angry face on the back. He also uses this cape right here, which you can see if you move it, he does have some very nice back printing. And he does come with this little infinity orb, I believe they're called, on the front right here, which does come in all the other sets, but it's nice to get that still. And here's the Sakaran, and this dude comes in all the other Guardians of the Galaxy sets. He's not a member of the Guardians of the Galaxy, he's actually one of the bad guys, just like Ronin, which we just took a look at. And he is... Ah, you guys know, I've said it in all other reviews, his leg printing, he doesn't have any leg printing whatsoever, once he has such detailed face and torso printing, it's really lame that he doesn't have any leg printing, that it just looks inconsistent. And he does have that very nice gun mold that does appear in all the other sets, and if you want to look, you can see on the back he does have some nice silver printing, and the same goes for his front face and his back facial printing. So here is Ronan the Accuser and the Sakaran's vehicle. Very similar to the one that is included in the Star Blaster Showdown set, which is this one right here. This one is just a little bit bigger and I think a little bit more well done. Uh, you can see the front, there's actually this little part right here, which is where Ronan the Accuser is supposed to stand. So I guess he stands outside the vehicle. So you just put him on right there. And he fits on like that, which works really well. So that is pretty cool. And there are these missiles on the side of the vehicle which are the new push missiles. So all you have to do is flick them down or push them down like that, and they fly out. So that's really well done. And on the back of the vehicle, you can see there's kind of this little thruster right here, which is very similar to the one on the one from the Star Blaster Showdown set. And on the side right here, there's another one of those push missiles. And there's also this crater piece, which is also included in the Star Blaster Showdown set's vehicle. Uh, and this is quite rare. It only comes with Shuff and the Star Blaster Showdown set. So that's pretty nice to get. And also, there's the same stickers that were included in this Star Blaster Showdown set for the little cockpit right there. But inside the cockpit, I think it's a little bit better because they have actually a printed piece here, albeit not an exclusive printing, uh, but the one from the Star Blaster Showdown used a sticker. So that's pretty nice, but you can still only fit one minifigure in there. So if you want to fit this a car in, that's all you can really fit in there. Just put off his, take off his little gun and then push it down like that. Of course the wings you could put down like this or flap it around a little bit like this. So there you go. So that's it for this vehicle. All right, so here is the Milano spaceship. Wow, you can see how big this is. It is really, really big. And I just love the detail on it, this vehicle. We'll take a close up of the inside right here, but first let's just admire the outside details. They use this kind of curved detail to make kind of this front part right here. Basically that's a combination of some snot pieces and some pins and stuff like that. And it's kind of curved to make this triangular look. So that's really nice and well done. And you can see they use some of these yellow pieces right here. Like this little yellow tile that's a one by one tile is kind of hard to find. It only comes and this set in this color, but I believe a Minecraft set uh, has a very similar coloring to this on a one by one tile. So some may not consider it exclusive. But on the side right here, you can see some of the blue detailing on some of these bow pieces and stuff like that. And even on the wings right here, these wing pieces are quite uncommon. They either only come in Hero Factory and Bionicle sets, and some are just plain out exclusive to the set of course, in these kind of metallic gray colors, or metallic silver, that's a better word for it. Uh, but they do use some of these stickers, like you can see there's a sticker right here. There's also a sticker on this one right here, and a sticker on this one down here. Uh, but still, I love how they kind of made this cluster of wings by using some Technic pins and connectors to flap some of them up and flap some of them slanted, and even using some ball joints back there, so that's really nice. Going to the back of the vehicle, you can see uh, the back engine right there. 
is pretty, I guess it's pretty basic. Sometimes we get elaborate uh, engines and stuff like that for bigger ships, but I like how this one's very kind of small. It's just this little pot right here. Uh, and also they use some of these triangular flap pieces, which you can move up and down, but I don't see why you do that. And also you can move these parts right here all around. But I don't see if there's any point to that. I think it's really just to be like this. And it was kind of convenient that you couldn't move it around. But that's still pretty cool. And you can see a little bit of a back right here. Because that's because they use this window piece on the back. Which is a trans blue window. And, but that kind of gets covered like this. And you can't really flap it up anymore. So it's hard to see. Unless you want to take off the whole roof part. And this side, this side right here is basically identical to the opposite side. Just flipped around. They use the same stickers and everything like that, just flipped to the other side. So that's really nice. And if you notice, this is one thing I noticed, I don't know if this plays a certain role in the movie, but this side has this little piece right here, which is kind of this uh, circular tile that's in this lime color with a little sticker on it. But that's only on this side and not that side. So I wonder what that's all about. I'm sure it probably plays into the movie somehow, but it's a nice little detail. And onto this top part right here, you can see there's this little flap, which also has a sticker. And the main part of this, how you get inside, is that you have to take off this whole roof piece. And it's a little bit hard to take off once you're holding it like that, but just kind of have to flap it open like that. And you see it comes off quite well. Also, this little piece right here, which is used for the cockpit in this trans blue color, is exclusive to this set in that color. So that's really nice to get. And inside the vehicle, there's space for a few minifigures. Uh, definitely the three in this set, because they have the front part right there. You just gotta take off Star-Lord's gear and stuff like that. Maybe it would be better if when he's inside, he uses this little hair piece. So you stick him in like that, and he fits in there. And then you should put Gamora and Drax in there. Because you just gotta stick them on the seats right there. And I cannot find, oh, there's Gamora. She fits in there like there. So you can see it does definitely fit the three minifigures in the set. And if you want to go even further and put some of the minifigures from the other sets, like maybe put Rocket Raccoon, he could fit in the back area right here because there is this little seat right here. Of course, he does have smaller legs, so he, you just kind of have to stick him standing on the seat. And unfortunately, you cannot stick Groot in this set, uh, which kind of sucks. But, I mean, there's no possible way they could do that. Unless he does turn into his plant mode in the movie, which I don't know if they do that. I know they do that in the comics where he could kind of turn into a small plant. Uh, so that is it for that. And you can see on the front little cockpit right here, they do use that nice seat design that's very similar to what they use in the Quinjet. And they use this nice printed piece right here, which I thought was exclusive printing, but actually does come in some Star Wars sets from last year. So it isn't exclusive or anything like that. Still a nice print because it only comes in Star Wars sets and no Marvel sets or anything like that. Also, there's a fire extinguisher, which is common in a lot of LEGO Marvel sets. And there's also this little clip right here. But there's really no place you could put Gamora's sword. Uh, because you can see that her sword won't really fit if it's down like this because it won't fit on that clip. And while there's clips on the side right here, it still won't fit because it'll still be popping out like this. So there's no way you could fit the sword in there, which kind of sucks, but it's just such a little detail and you don't really need to put the sword in the vehicle unless you want to put it all the way in the back right here, which it does fit there, but it would be lying on the floor. Uh, but they do include these clips, so you could probably put uh, Drax's little knives on the side right there, which those will fit on there perfectly, so that's really nice. And all the way in the back right here, there's a little boom box, which is where they play Hooked on a Feeling in the movie, which is just awesome because I love that song. It's really nostalgic to me. It was from Ally McBeal, actually. And it's cool how they included that detail. They just basically use this little uh, cassette tape printing right there and this little, uh, I guess I always called it the vent piece, but it's really kind of like a computer board piece that was found in a lot of early Star Wars sets right there. And they kind of put that into the side by using some Technic pins. And it looks like a boombox, so that is really, really a nice printing and a nice little build right there. And all the way on the back, you can see kind of that lead out to the window. So that is it really for the inside. One last look is going to be at the bottom of the vehicle, or the ship would be a better term for it. And basically they use these little radar dishes pieces in this yellow color, which are exclusive to this set and a Chima set from this year. It's a very crappy Chima set, so yeah, you probably don't want to pick that one up. And they do use some of these bumper pieces in blue right there, just as a little detail. You can see there's some missiles. 
Also on the front, there's this little, uh, these little uh, shooting push missile pieces or missile guns or stud shooters or whatever you want to call them from this year, which of course all you have to do is press down on that and the little stud shoot. So that's a pretty nice detail how they did that because they basically put them on these little hinges so you can move up and down. So you can move those any way you want. You can put them up here or you can put them up there like that. So that's a very nice little detail. On the back of the bottom, there's these little bumper pieces in this kind of orangey color. And then there's these little flaps, which we saw a little bit from on the back view. So that's really it for this set. Uh, it is a very, very big set. One last look on the front right there. And yeah, really cool set. And now on to the final verdict. Overall, when I first saw pictures of this set, I wasn't too impressed. I thought it was pretty cool looking. And now that I have it built, this is a really stellar set. Now, does it match the price per piece ratio? Maybe the price might be just the weakest part about the set besides this little vehicle right here, which is eh. Uh, because this price is $75 in the United States for 665 pieces. So it doesn't really meet the price per piece ratio, and it's off by around 90 pieces. But still, the minifigures, I think, make up for the price because the minifigures are so detailed. While the Sakarin is the same that comes in all other sets, and I have the same problems where he doesn't have any leg printing, wow, the other four minifigures are excellent. You got Ronin the Accuser, who has an exclusive mold just to the minifigure, and that's just the best part about him, because that exclusive mold is going the extra mile, because I love it when they make exclusive molds just to make the minifigure more accurate, and it's very impressive that they did it in a much expensive set. And his torso and leg printing is just fine, and it's actually pretty cool, as goes for his face print. So you get all that, and then you go on to Gamora, and Gamora is really awesome. I love the kind of green coloring she has on her face and a little bit on her torso. And the best part about her, besides, I guess, her green-colored face, is the little silver on her face print, which is very hard to see, but it really adds to the detail. And I love her hair piece, where it has those little purple lining in kind of the strands of her hair, because that looks really cool. And just her torso alone is really nice, as I pointed out earlier. Then you move on to Star-Lord, and this version of Star-Lord is exclusive. Unlike what I said in the Star Blaster Showdown set, I'm sorry, these two are different. And while I don't like this one as much as I like the one in the Star Blaster Showdown, because I like his casual jacket better in that set, it is nice that they did make an exclusive version just to differentiate from that. While he does have the same face print and the same mask and whatever and the same hair, uh, he does have different torso and legs, which is really cool. And then last, Drax the Destroyer. Wow, this might be my favorite minifigure in the set because the detail is so, so well done on this minifigure. He has detail just about everywhere besides, I guess, the side of his legs because he has detail on his torso print, on both of his arms on the sides. Also, he has detail on the back of his head, even though it's not a double-sided face for obvious reasons since he doesn't have any hair or a helmet to cover it up. He does have detail there and on the back of his torso. And that detail alone is so, so well done. It's so intricate. And as I pointed out in the minifigure close-up, you could just see it, how well done it is. There's all these little markings and stuff like that, which look fantastic. I love how they use Lego skulls on the printing. It just is so, so intricate. So he's one of my favorite minifigures of the year. And wow, that's kind of funny how I said that with basically all the Guardians of the Galaxy sets that one of the minifigures from there is one of my minifigures, favorite minifigures of the year. And it really goes to show how much detail they put into the minifigures of this line. Now, getting past the minifigures alone, kind of hinted on this, but I'm not a huge fan of the ship. I think it's a little bit too similar to the one in the Star Blaster Showdown. But I do like this version better than the Star Blaster Showdown one because it's a little bit bigger. There's room to fit two minifigures, albeit one standing on the front, which is where Ronan's supposed to go. This one has a little bit of printing inside the cockpit, and it just looks a little bit more, I guess, since it's a little bit more big, it looks a little bit better and a little bit cooler. And now going on to the Milano. Wow, the Milano spaceship is really, really well done. I love the detail on the spaceship. I love all the curvy parts. I love some of the pieces that are exclusive to this set in that color, like this piece right here, and some of the metallic wings and stuff like that. And just, it looks really, really well done. I also love how there's space inside. Of course, once you take this part off, there's lots of space to put the minifigures, which make up for there not being any um, really cool play features in this set, because while there's some flicking fire missiles, there's not like any amazing launching features or anything like that. But just the uh, play feature that you can move the minifigures around in the vehicle really make up for it. And it just looks really cool. And they even went with the little details like the boombox in the back. 
So overall, this set is phenomenal. It is an A for me. It's not an A+, plus because I don't feel too satisfied with the price or the villain's vehicle. But still, it is a very, very good set. Definitely the best Marvel set of this year, dare I say. So that's it for this review, and I will see you guys later. Bye.